Welcome to Match Fishing Masterclass. You join me today for a live match at Moreland's Farm in Kidderminster. So, it's just about the all in now, just waiting for it to be called. And uh, I drew peg 31 on Silver Lake. So, let's get, I'm just gonna grab my net. Yeah, so this lake, for anybody that doesn't know it, is predominantly F1s. And I haven't fished this lake before, so I just thought I'd come today for a cheeky little practice, to be honest, because I've booked on the festival here, which is due to take place in about two weeks, I think it is. So, yeah, I thought it'd be rude not to come and have a little practice just so I'm a little bit more prepared so I'm just going to keep things dead simple today and I'll talk you through what I'm going to do so I'm going to have three lines one short at about four meters four and a half meters um, one long which I'm I've got maggots and pellets for today so I'm going to see what's I'm gonna start on pellets there first on, on all my lines and see how it's fishing if it's fishing all right I'll stay on pellets but if it is hard I'll have to switch switch to maggots but the weather's it's raining but it's still warm it's around 18 degrees today so I imagine the fish are just gonna to want to come shallow um, rigs for today on the deck I've just got start from the top it's got a yellow Vespi elastic. Main lines, 017 power line. Um, got a 0.3 carp pellet, and dot and down. Um, moving down, just got a strung bulk of number nines. And then the hook length is 013 power line again, down to a 18 SFL hook from Preston with a little bite band on. And I'm just gonna fish hard pellets. So fours and sixes. If it's good, I'll fish sixes. And uh, if it's hard, I'll fish fours. We've just got three shallow rigs set up. All, all the same, so got Matrix 10 to 12 slick elastic. Um, 017 power line. Little dibber float. This one's a uh, 0.1, but because it's the shallowest rig. And then I've got 2.2 set up as well, for, just for fishing a bit deeper it's got a little bulker shot on this on this one down to a four inch hook length and uh, again an 18 SFL hook with a little bite band the other two rigs are exactly the same but uh, the deeper one so I've got three set up one at about 8 inch one at 12 inch and this one at about 18 inch um, this one has just got a strung shotting pattern so it's got three number uh, tens just about four inch apart and then we've got two margin rigs one for short here on a top kit and one for a bit longer about eight meters up to the next pallet um, where I'm going to try and catch some carp there with pellets and corn but this short one I'm going to keep F1s with micros and four mils so again same as the on the deck rig yellow um, best be elastic, that's the all in called there. Um, 017 power line, 015 hook length this time, down to a GPM hook, so same as the SFL but a bit stronger. I'm just going to start on pellet short. a little tip what I'm doing so I'll show you quickly just got my fishery pellets here and all I'm gonna do is just take some out because what will happen with fishery pellets they tend to you get quite a lot of floaters in them so I'm just gonna get some oil this is tiger nut oil you can use pretty much whatever you like I like this one just give it a little squirt Mm. 
just basically soak. Only about a quarter of a pint of pellets, you don't need loads. Just soak them in that oil. What this is going to do is make sure they all sink, sink down to the bottom quite quick. It's going to kick off with about 24 mils. I'm going to rattle them in from a height. Just going to lower the rig down nice and slow. And then we're fishing. All I'm going to do for the first 10-15 minutes is just watch, just look around because it's all locals on this match. By the sounds of it this morning, they know every peg <laughs> like the back of their hand while listening to them. But everyone started short. I'm just going to keep my eyes out for what they're doing. I've already got a plan in my head, really, of what I want to do. But there's been an awful lot of rain this week. So that could make it fish hard. There we go, first fish. I'm not going to chuck any bait or anything in at the moment. Literally just going to stick to kinder potting first before I get all excited and start throwing bait everywhere. Once I get this fish in, I am going to put another shot on my float and take this jacket off because I'm warm. It's a bit warm now. Just, just before the all in, the oh, heart has come off. It started raining, so I had to put a jacket on. Right, whilst that's out, I'm going to. Take this jacket off and stick another shot on. Oh, just as I go to take that off, it started raining. Okay, what I'll do, I'll settle down into the match. And I'll, um, I'll catch up with you in a bit because it's just started raining. So, you've not missed much. We had a little shower then for like 10 minutes or so. But, I've not caught a fish. I upped that one earlier on. However, it was foul looked and come off. This is my fourth feed now. And what I've realised is, 
the fish do not want to be on the bottom at all. Getting indications about that then. Straight away indications. It's telling me the fish are coming into the feed, but they're not going down onto, onto the bottom. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna start pinging some pellets on that longer line. I'm gonna give this probably another five or 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna go shallow on that longer line. There you go. That was a better boy. One about a pound. Lost my bum strike right then. Yeah, so I'll try and I'll just stick on this line for now. Try and catch as many as I can off it. But from what I've seen so far, I'm definitely going to need to go shallow. When I'm feeding on the catapult, I'm just making sure that I lift, lift my pole up as high as it will go before it starts taking the float out of the water. That way, if I do get a bite when I'm feeding my catapult, like that one just, it'll just pull the elastic out because it's hooking itself under the tension of the pole. Wind's starting to get up now slightly, so what I might have to do in a minute. Well, I'm caught. I'm fishing quite a short line, about 10 inch above my float. Just put a back shot on. Won't do it quite yet. It's not that bad.
quite funny this morning now when I drew I drew my peg and one of the locals said I'd go home. <laughs> I have I've been here a few times now to, to film and stuff like that. Um and I kind of gathered that to my left down there where the wind's blowing is the better end of the lake. I don't know whether the the prevailing wind always blows down there, which makes it better. But we've all got a bit of room today, at least a spare peg either side. So it should be alright, should get a day's fishing anyway. But we'll see. And what I've seen before, I imagine I'm going to be fishing for 80 to 100 pounds from here. Okay. Silly indications now. There you go. Feels far look this does. Not so. It's in the back. Fish, two pound. Every time I think about just coming in and having a go on that shallow line, I like a fish. It's not the best though. It's the 20 minutes in there. I've got two F1s. Not great.
Okay, so we are an hour in. Just managed to take my coat off. And then it's now start to rain again. A little update. I've gone shallow now on that longer line. I've had three F1s on it. I've had to wait quite a long time for bites. Just gonna change this really shallow rig. Um, over to a normal hook. I say a normal hook, a, a hook without a band. Just for these maggots because that other one was missing quite a lot of bites. And it's just because the lash was too long. And I thought there was silverfish to be fair, but I've had two bites now where like the line straightened and it's not hooked itself but an F1 has like swirled as if it's leaving the peg. So I need to shorten the lash down. Just so the to hook the cells basically. Can't have it too short because the rules here at Morelands specify that how long your lash has to be. Any proper bites now they should hook themselves or most of them. Wind is not ideal to be doing this like. There you go. Didn't even have to strike then.
Come to Ryan again. Because of the wind, I'm having to put the pole like, in between my, my legs just to allow me to feed without the wind blowing it off, off my legs, basically. need to remember to clip my fish because the net the net limit is 70 pound I think that's terrible that one I think 70 pound the net limit can't see me catching 140 pound I've got put put two nets in I think I'm gonna fill one net basically up to probably gonna put like 50 fish in it if I catch 50 that is this matrix 10 to 12 slick absolutely perfect for this Trying to look through my maggots and find a nice riddling one. There's half of them are dead. Oh. There you go. It's a nice thing about a dipper. You do get a tangle, you just shake the rig a lot of the time and it'll just come out.
There you go, that was absolutely beautiful then. This is there, flicks it over. The elastic just come pouring out. You can tell I'm really rusty at this kind of thing at the moment, this kind of fishing. I'm so glad I come today. I literally haven't done this for probably 12 months. I've done a load of carp fishing, but it's different because with carp fishing you're fishing a longer lash. And longer lash is just nicer when you're flicking the rig over. With this you need to fish as short a lash as possible really. So when I'm flicking the rig over, because I am rusty, a lot of the time I'll poles like it in the water and a pole tip and stuff. <laughs> like that. Absolutely shocking. But can't do every kind of fishing and stay in touch with it all. Unfortunately, I wish I could, but it's just not the case. I'll tell you what, it's absolutely beautiful when the sun, when the sun comes out. Silverfish there, pinching my maggots. To be fair, when I've, if I've had a, had a maggot pinched by a silverfish, I haven't had a bite off an F1 then. Double maggot, definitely the best. I think if I could shorten that lash by another two inches, I'd catch a load more, but unfortunately, fishery rules state that I can't. That was much nicer than whipping that rig over. Just done it nice and light this time. Ugh. I like to up the feed to try and get rid of them silverfish, but another rule is bite limits here. You're only allowed eight points of eight points of bait. So I haven't got enough maggots really to to blast the load in. I think I've got enough to feed them. Just steady. Oh, there we go, that was nice.
under a pound that one. I didn't even have a bite and I won't be surprised if that one's far up to, to be honest. Oh my god, isn't it my life? I must have just lifted up as he, as he took the maggots. Nice fish. Halfway through the match now. And I'm still on that shallow line with with maggots. I'm having to keep changing my rig or changing my depth. Because the I only buy like two and three inches at a time. Not like massive changes, but I like have one or two fish. And then they'll go a, a bit funny. So I like change it by two inch, have another fish. And nothing. Still a lot of silver set. I think I'm just gonna have to cope with that though, because I just haven't got enough bite to lever it in. Don't think they want loads of bite anyway, to be honest. The F1s. I think that's only the third fish of foul look so far, to be honest. I haven't had lots of problems with foul lookers because it just didn't, doesn't seem to be loads of fish in the peg. These gusts of winds, wind aren't the best. We've got 25 F1s, all ranging from like a pound to two pound. We've probably got about 35, 35 pound 
in about two hours. Yeah, just over two hours. So, it's not that bad. Tiny little. Swap this rig again to the shallower one. That's what I'm about to keep doing, just literally keep alternating between the two. The, the deep rig hasn't been any good because there is too many silvers in the peg and it's just allowing them time to, to grab hold of it when it's falling. There we go. That's what I mean. As soon as we swap to that shallower rig now, we'll probably catch one or two. And then. I won't get another one then. But I'll have to change again. Ooh. I'll have to change again. And I'll get another little run. Elastic, absolutely lovely. Just fishing the 10 to 12 slick from my tricks. Really nice, it is. What I do like about this slick is um, it's very consistent. So when you when you're playing the fish, like because it's a synthetic elastic and not not like uh, your typical solids, it doesn't doesn't like get stronger. Like it doesn't power up. Just stay very consistent. So when when you're fishing out long, it's very soft. But when you're at the net, it's perfect for these F1s because it's still soft. Whereas if you're fishing a, a solid latex elastic, it does get strong. When you when you give it like one pull, the consistency changes dramatically because it does power up. When people say, um, when people say, oh, it's soft on the strike, but powers up, when they're talking about solid elastic, uh, when they're talking about synthetic, synthetic elastic, they're talking rubbish. It's only natural latex elastic that actually changes like get stronger with synthetic elastic all you're doing is so like your typical hollow elastics um, and this this hybrid solid elastic all you're doing when you're pulling pulling some out of the puller kit it's basically locking the elastic up more, you're not, it doesn't get any stronger. 
all you're doing is pulling the guts out of the elastic and, and ruining it, really. So many silverfish there. I was tempted to die this, well, this morning when I was setting up to, uh, to go 13 metres. But I'm glad I never. If, uh, just because even at, at this range, I'm struggling to keep my feed and accurate. And also, when I'm firing bait out using my catapult, struggling to keep keep the pole still. I think it's a nice range and I'll, that you're not you're not like spooking the fish because they're too close to you but at the same time you're close enough to you to be able to manage holding your pole. See that now, like, I've had one fish at this depth, and then it's not, I'm having to wait, whereas now if I pick that bit deeper rig up, probably get another one. Oh, there you go, just mowing that one on there. Oh, I have to wait for that fish quite some time. Just fishing all, all my rigs on Preston DWI short kits today. Because the peg's not very, very deep. It's only probably three and a half, three and a half foot. These short kits are absolutely perfect. Just talk you through what I'm doing. I'm just feeding like a quarter of a pouch of bait. Just flick it over once. Just see if I can get a bite. And if I can't get a bite, I'm just not feeding, I'll flick it over three times. And see if I can get a bite. And if there's no bite, I literally go back to quarter of a pouch of maggots. Well, that went too far. Round the float, flick it over once, so your hook bite falls with the other maggots. See if you can get a bite. No bite that time. And then what I'm doing is just also just lifting and dropping the rig only couple of inch out of the water just to move enough to move the the hook bait. There you go, that was a bite then. If you don't get a fit oh there you go. Just hook the fish. Feed a bit of bait. Shit back. We 
this stamp of fish. I'm literally having to pull the pull of kit just once. Let's give it a little pull. Fish pops up and net him. There you go. And that is basically the process. Just using double white maggot on the hook. Shoot bite. Flick it over a couple of times, see if you can get a bite. And whilst you're waiting there, see if you can get a bite. Feed some, get your catapult full, or we'll put your bait in. Fire that out around the float, flick it over once, see if you can get a bite. No bite then, flick it over three times. Oh, that was a bite. Flick it over again. Get some bite in your catapult. Feed round your float. Flick over once. See if you can get a bite. Silverfish bite then. Flick it over three times. silver fish bite. And what we're going to do now is just lift and drop for a bit. So again only enough to, to just move the bait. No boats doing that. I'm going to pick our catapult up again. Feed round the float. Flick it over once. Flick it over three times. That was four, but one for good luck. And we've got no magic left. A lot of silver fish in the peg, but that's the sequence that I like to go by. Just depending on how the fishing is, but today it's not the best. Don't get me wrong, we're still, still catching some fish. However, not solid. Flick it over three times. Try and get some bite round our float. Flick it over once. Silverfish bite and feed again. There we go. Oh.
just going to change the feeding a bit more. I'm just going to feed a bit more, a bit more bite. Just get some bite in the peg. Just lifting and dropping. Every now and again, just whip it over once. There you go. It's all about when it's like this, very tricky fishing. Just about alternating what what you're doing. That fish looks foul, looks. It's all about just alternating what you're doing. Just try and trick a few into, into feeding. That was perfect then. Wind just changing again now, it's coming to come from right to left. It's off my back there, I could throw it. Just about to the float. Really nice. It's another point to, to make note though for that festival. So if I draw up here, which I have got to draw up here one of the days on this lake, if it is going off my back, I know I can fish out to this 11 metre section and throw, basically throw the bait. That's a skimmer that one. Just pricked one then. That was lovely.
just about chuck it to this side of the the float which is okay because the fish will sit off the back of the bait anyway got 32 F1s now Still a lot of silvers there. Right away, I can tell that's that's gone funny. What I'm going to do is going to pick up that deeper big straight away. I think they've dropped, literally just dropped down a tiny bit. Flick it over once. Oh, there you go. Knew it. Knew it. And the, this is why the anglers that are doing this every week, three times a week, are so hard to beat because they're like two hours in front of the people who aren't doing it as much. It took me two hours to get. I'll start catching some fish. I'll start putting a, like a decent weight together. Whereas the anglers who are doing this every week, they're straight away, they're, they're on the ball putting a weight together.
that is starting to fire the wine out of that shallow line and give it another four or ten minutes see how see how it goes if it stays the same I'm gonna have a go down the edge And here comes the rain. I'm gonna have a go down the edge. Put that out of the way. For now, I'm just going to um, try hard pellets down there. Ooh. It's only like 18 inches deep, so I'm just going to work. Um, and feed micros. Fish a hard pellet on the hook. First fish down the edge. That's the next one. Ooh.
all I'm going to do, just every time I come in, just throw a few maggots out there. Initially, oh, initially I was feeding um, micras just through a matrix medium cad pot or flexi pot, I think they're called. But it's getting a hell of a lot of indications. No clean bites, so I've just fed half, half that pot full of uh, four mils and, and that, this fish here just, just rips the elastic out so hopefully we've sorted it out to the last 30 minutes now and I'm just gonna go down the edge I think for 30 minutes see what I can catch hopefully catch a couple of carp some F1s just gonna fish maggots down there Micros when I think it needs some. Got four. 43 F1s. Oh, there you go, there's a fish. That doesn't feel right, that. Fishing three white maggots on so 16 GPM hook. volume of baiting to be honest just to get try and get them in and try and get them to settle down really like churn up the bottom get some colour in the in the edge it might feel a bit safer then it's coloured up 
roll that one. two puts. Not going to get too excited because that's been the theme all day really, catch a couple. And it seems to have funny, no matter what you do really. I think, to be honest, my original plan was to put quite a lot, a lot of bait off onto the next platform, fish corn or something like that. I think that's that's how you're going to catch the car. bloke opposite me is just packing up. Like I said, I don't think this is the, the best part of the lake, to be honest. Oh, it's gone the platform now. To be fair, I really, really enjoyed my day. Not enjoyed the the rain because it's made it quite hard to film. Constantly up and off my box. But the fishing, I've really enjoyed it. Really technical. Got to think about what you're doing. I've not done it in such a long time, so it's just a bit different. Ooh, that's a nice bite. Just lift the float like two inch out the water, let it go, it just kept going. It was lovely.
another one. So be careful because these these F1s that I'm catching in the edge, they certainly know where this platform is. Yet the ones that I've been catching out in the lake, not none of them have gone for this platform. Yet all these what I've caught short. Go for the platform. Oh, that's a nice big one. Feels a bit heavier, this. Another F1. Well, that might have been a carp then. Nice F1. Foul locked. Definitely foul locked. Yeah, knew it. Straight away, as soon as you put micros in, it starts colouring up. Blowing them absolutely everywhere there because I've just seen a swirl literally probably two metres off the bank.
There's about five minutes left. And I'm going to try the pellet just to see if it can catch a carp. Definitely carp coming in. Ooh. Had it on the right hand then. I do not want that hard pellet. I'm glad I brought some maggots with me. Because if I just fish pellets today, I don't think I'd have many fish at all.
that float should be flying under now. There's fish coming in to, to micro pellets, but that hard pellet there, maybe soft pellet would have been better. There you go, that's the all out. All out! <sighs> well, actually enjoyed that. Quite frustrating at times. However, really enjoyed it. So I'll just get my pole away and then I'll talk you through what I've done today. I'd like to see someone doing it gently instead of fucking... Yeah. Some people, they dump them in. They don't... Like, it's, honestly, you won't get your breath. They don't think of them as living things, that's why. They just see them as a thing. You wonder why you see them all three or four on the back on the top of them. Yeah. 44 2. Thank you. Well Thank you. Knackered. So if he wins at the mini, yeah. none of them two to weigh, but you'll get your sections. He's, he's, or he wins every match in his Does he? Normally, yeah. Really dark, boy. Yeah. That's it then. We've weighed in. Um, I've had about 86 pound, I think. Something like that. But the guy to my left has um, beat me for the section by a pound, I think. So he's a regular, and Grant said, this guy wins every match here, and I, so I've I've done all right. But the main thing is, um, I've learned absolutely loads. One being, the do not want pellets. I should have started on maggots. I've spoke to the guy who's won the match. He's had 120 pound on the end peg, and he's just fed maggots all day. Spoke to a couple of the others, and they've said exactly the same. They fed maggots all day. Whereas the first hour and a half, I think I'd, I'd fish pellets. And it was totally wrong. And then it's proved it even in the last five minutes when you're seeing I swapped to a pellet down the edge and um, I, couldn't, I couldn't get a bite. Yet, minutes before, I was catching one of Chuck on maggots. Um, like I said when, when I was fishing the match, shouldn't really use a match as practice. Um, you should go pleasure fishing to, to just get rid of the rust and stuff. But I've absolutely loved it. So. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.